record. All right, here we are. Uh, if you have any technical problems, uh, Lisa, welcome aboard. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, put you into. Um, do you want to be? Yeah, there we go. All right, Lisa's here. Thank you. And um, stop video. There we go. So everybody can see what's going on. We're going to make chicken parmesan. Now, usually chicken parmesan is all fried. And um, and uh, I just realized I don't have the kitchen light on. Is there enough light? Let me turn it on. I don't know if that's any better or not, but now the light's on. Okay, so chicken parmesan is normally a fried item that, uh, you know, is a lot of fat, a lot of calories. Um, so we're going to make um, chicken parmesan that's a little better for you, and we're not going to fry it, we're going to bake it. The thing about chicken, bones, breasted chicken, you know, when you go to the grocery store in restaurants, they order a size, like a four ounce chicken breast and five ounce. I'd say you want a four or five ounce chicken breast. But what happens when you go to the grocery store, unless you want to pay like $7 a pound, they're like this big, right? So. What we want to do is, uh, I like to get them instead of spending those fit and trim ones. In the old days, they didn't grow chickens this big. I don't know what changed, but uh, and and then cut them down to a size that you can do what you want with it. So I already kind of cut this one down a little bit. So we'll cut it down. So you take this big old turk chicken breast. It's almost like a turkey, isn't it? And you cut off the parts. That you don't want, you can use them for soup or for stir fry. And so you just kind of look at it, and cut off all the loose pieces and all the big pieces that are too big. And basically, what you're doing is carving it into the size you want. And then you're having all these other pieces that are going to be available for other dishes. It's still pretty big, isn't it? It's getting better. But, and at the same time, you want to shape it. Shape it so that it's uh, the size and shape of a chicken breast. Those fit and trim ones. I guess they, they don't carve them down like this, so they, they raise them up to that size so they use a younger chicken. All right, so there we have two. Two chicken breasts, like six ounces. Give or take. Give or take. You can make them bigger if you want, but we want them to cook in a timely manner here today, uh, as we have about 45 minutes. So now I'm just going to cut a pocket. And what I do is I put the knife in on this angle here and put it in. And so you make your slit just about an inch, inch and a half. But then once you get your knife in there, you run it all the way around the inside so that you make the pocket bigger on the inside, but smaller on the outside. So for those of you who haven't come to the STARS program, we've pretty much done every cooking recipe there is during the STARS. And uh, so there we have that, ready to go. and. Um, STARS is for the senior time residents of Pennsylvania, uh, York County, Pennsylvania. And uh, we're always looking for new ideas. If you have ideas you'd like to have a class on now when we're doing virtually, I don't know how long this is going to last. They have to be a little bit shorter. I was thinking a good class might be uh, making sauerkraut. I could make sauerkraut like crazy. All right. Let's get rid of this. This is thick, extra thick tomato sauce. Now what I did was take this and I like to buy tomato sauce that is when you buy store-bought tomato sauce, tomato basil I think is no matter what the brand is, tomato basil seems to be one of the healthier ones because a lot of the other tomato sauce even in the same brand they usually add, they might add sugar, they usually add sugar but the tomato basil they hardly ever add sugar. So a good quality tomato sauce with no sugar added is what we're going to use for this recipe, and it's also what I would use. I have a little dish here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, what I would use, like if you're making pizza or something. You can see what I did here was 
and you'll have the recipes. If you don't have the recipe, just send me an email, deb at debbixler.com, or in the group, I'll post it in the Facebook group as well. You take your tomato sauce, dump it in there, and add two tablespoons, give or take, of tomato paste. And then you can fortify the flavor if you want by adding more, say, oregano or thyme, uh, garlic powder. But the goal is to just put it on a really low heat so that it just reduces to a much thicker. You can see that it's way thicker than it would be when it comes right out of the jar. So we just want a thicker tomato base, tomato paste. We don't want paste, but we don't, we want it thicker. So what we're going to do is put a little bit on the inside of each one of these. And then we're going to put some fresh herbs. I have herbs growing already. And so, whoops, what do we got here? And I, I forget what herbs I wrote on the, um, here, let's see what we get here. One of the advantages of cooking virtually at home is that um, <laughs> if I forgot something, I just run right over to the kitchen and get it, or just turn around and get it. So I have oregano, oregano, I have thyme, and I have rosemary. You could use any herbs you want. So when you have rosemary, like depending on what herb you're using, like rosemary, you usually take it like this and just reverse strip it. And the ends are very tender. So you just reverse strip it. Can you see that far away? I feel like I'm really far away. There we go, right there, strip it. Put it in there. And for parsley, I mean oregano, oregano is really easy to do. Same thing, reverse strip it. Pull the end off. This is way, way more than I need for this two little chicken breast. This is a little, like this is thyme. And they have to be very delicate with it because it's very tender on the ends in the beginning of the season, but you kind of try to do the same thing. The coarser stem parts, I actually do, instead of reverse pull it, I actually pull with the same direction. Let's do the same thing. You just kind of strip it off and the tips are tender enough to use. See how tender it is? <laughs> so you just pull it like this in reverse. Whoops, see that the end came off. Just pull it like that and strip it right off. Can you see that? And you go night. You go get these chickens in the oven. I'll tell you how and two go knives got their name. You don't really need to get this really fine. So we're just gonna put some of this inside of each one. You have to use dry, you use a lot less. Put some of that in there. And you could when you're enhancing your Tomato sauce, you could use the drop the right. What do I need? Oh, I need cheese. I got some fresh mozzarella. Now we have a pandemic going on. And so it started right when I was supposed to be presenting this class to White Rose seniors in York. I actually had three classes that month. And um, I talked to everybody on Friday. And so this is mozzarella one of them in there and everybody was going to have their class and so on the weekend I went and bought all the food put a little more in I like a lot of cheese I'm not for sure with you guys um so I went out and bought all the food for three cooking classes and um now we're going to go like this sweet but we're going to go like this Squeeze that shut. You can put some Parmesan in there if you want, but I'm gonna put it all on the outside. Get this in the oven so it can start cooking. I wanna cover it, but I don't wanna seal it. So what I'm gonna do is put the parsley. I have a pan in there. Put it like this. You can use oil if you want it, but you don't wanna seal it. You wanna give it just some cover so it doesn't brown. 
but not so covered that it's gonna um ding. Got that in the oven. Good job. Hopefully it'll be done in 30 minutes. It will be. I have the oven set on um, 390. I could turn it up. But at normal, if you're not in a hurry, I would say 350 would be adequate. What was I telling you? Oh, yeah. Well, all the cooking class, all the food <laughs> for those three cooking classes over the weekend and on Monday, they all canceled. So I have a freezer full of food. And so it is a pandemic, but I took my cheese that I bought, the Parmesan I just put in the refrigerator was still unopened, but I took the cheese, the mozzarella and the queso fresco, because we were gonna make this dish plus a couple others, and uh, cut them in half and ate, you know, put some in the other half of the freezer. So this time, you, you can freeze dairy products is my point. So if you have to go to the grocery store and pick up some extra things without hoarding, just some extra things. Uh, most dairy products, like I have a pack of, I love uh, I've cream cheese, but I always freeze it because I only use, a, I buy the, well, the bigger block because it's cheaper for more. Use. You cut it in half, you put half in the freezer. So I put half the mozzarella in the freezer, half the queso fresco in the freezer, and I just put this the refrigerator this would keep for quite a long time all right we'll get this ready and then i thought we'd make some salad dressings chances are everybody has vinegars and things at home uh, we can also i'll make one or two salad dressings and then if we have any questions before the chicken's done we'll open up the lines so everybody can see each other and ask any questions they might have. So that's ready to go. I'm gonna use some more of this. And then we're gonna make a, um, probably gonna run out of time. <laughs> People who are always at the senior cooking classes are um, used to me saying we're gonna run out of time and we're not gonna get everything done. So we'll have to see what happens on that issue. Because that, I'm saying the same thing as I always say. All right, let's make some salad dressing. Now, salad dressing is the one thing that everybody buys and why. It is so easy to make and so inexpensive to make and so much better tasting. So uh, the recipe flyer that I gave you calls for uh, the classic French dressing. Now, it, it might not say French, but that's what that is. Vinegar and oil, a red wine vinegar, is your classic French dressing. We in America think that French dressing is supposed to be red or orange. I'll show you how to make that one too. But if you go to culinary school, the classic French dressing is not red or orange. It's made with red wine vinegar. And we need, I mean, I think it's about a third of a cup. But you know what? It's almost like you can use any uh, any combination. Like if you like it, um, I think I wrote a third of a cup on your paper. But if you like it tartar, you can use more vinegar. If you like it, you know, some people like more oil in it. And so then um, we're going to put some salt and pepper in. But this is so simple. I don't let anybody do it. I usually go for about equal parts vinegar and oil. A lot of people like less oil. Um, where's my oil? <laughs> One of the things about not having a live audience <laughs> is that nobody can help me find my, my ingredients, nor can anybody help me remember to put everything in. So I usually go about, well, that's more than half. I usually go about equal parts. Salt and pepper. Did I put that in already? I think I did. It looks kind of peppery in there. But we'll put it in again. I love pepper. Pepper's good for you. And right now, spicing up your food is important. 
Uh, spicy food, my naturopath said eat spicy food. It's not good for this, this particular virus. And so we're going to put some oregano in there. We will, let's just put some of this that I chopped up here. You can use dry oregano if you want. You, well, anytime you're using fresh, you would use more than you would dry. In other words, if a recipe said one tablespoon of fresh oregano, then you would go ahead and use one and a half or even just one teaspoon of dry oregano. So that's pretty much the whole classic recipe right there, salt, pepper, and oregano. You could put a little bit of parsley in there. I, as you know, we use thyme, rosemary, and oregano. Cooking is art. Creative. So this should get a little bit of Dijon, I believe. I don't think I put that in there. That's a little more than a little bit. And this is the classic French dressing. And what that little bit of Dijon mustard, or, and you could use any, this is creative. So even though the recipe says Dijon, salt, pepper, oregano, all red wine vinegar, and oil, you could use any kind of vinegar, any kind of seasoning, any kind of the purpose of the mustard is as an emulsifier. It won't, it's going to still separate, and you know, if you let it sit around for 15 or 20 minutes, but at the dinner table, when you shake it up a little bit, it's going to stay emulsified long enough for you to pour it out of the jar and even for a little longer. So there's kind of your basic recipe. Now we could take the exact same recipe and make any number of recipes. So we could take this one, I'm just going to make a couple. I'm just going to just make a couple. I'm not a, I'm not a salad dressing. I do the same thing, right? Here, let's just do it. Just so she was done it right from the beginning. But you know what? If I wanted to do this with balsamic, go for it. This is how easy. This is how easy it is to make salad dressings. Um, go ahead with your oil. Whoa! Again, a little carried away there. Some of that. So, where's my ketchup? What I usually do, I'm a big fan of ketchup. And when I get to the bottom, I, I have, you know, you have that little bit in there. And so, one of the recipes on there is French, like American style French. And so, all you have to do now is take the exact same recipe that we had before. and add a little bit of ketchup. And now you have Catalina, French, whatever it is. I didn't put the mustard in, did I? Whatever it is that you want. And if you wanted to make it a little sweeter for the kids, you could put in honey. Now we have our Catalina there and our French. What did I do with it? <laughs> oh, I, did I use the same one? Oh, there it is. There's that. So see the difference? Now you could add more tomato in there if you wanted to. Or you can take another one and let's make, what, what did I call that? Bistro? Is, which one has the bacon in it? I think that's what I called it, bistro. I put the salt in there already? I think I did. For those of you who are new to cooking with Deb, never been at the STARS classes, but I always do. I never know what I put in, where my ingredients are. And usually I have a whole audience to keep me on track, but I have to keep myself on track here today. So we don't have any bacon. It's a pandemic and I don't usually buy bacon. But I just happened to have this ham that was in the refrigerator or freezer, I should say, left over from a previous STARS class. So I'm just going to put that in there. Bistro, I believe it's the bistro one, calls for crisp bacon and blue cheese, right? Is that what I'm remembering? So we're going to use soggy ham <laughs> and queso fresco. <laughs> Because this is uh, 
art. Cooking is created. Now, Queso Fresco has a nice, um, you could use Parmesan in there, you could use anything. But Queso Fresco is um, crumbly. I like the texture of it to mix in with salad dressing. And there's, I think, five dressings there, but it's this easy. This is how easy it really is to make salad dressing. Anytime you have a condiment jar that's almost empty, like, like, like let's say your honey jar or your mustard jar is almost empty. Just vinegar, oil, a little bit of honey, some seasonings, boom, shake it up, serve it out of the jar. Here we have our bistro. We just made enough style dressing for a family of two for a couple weeks. And we spent pennies compared to what you buy in those jars. Those jars, I had my nieces come down every summer and I had bought a jar of their favorite salad dressing and I had it in there and they drank about half of it or ate about half of it. And um, the other day I was cleaning out the refrigerator more or less and I found it and I looked at the date and it's, and it's been in there since last July. And it still it didn't even expire until like four more months. So I wonder, I wonder what's in there, right? I wonder what's in there. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unmute everybody. And if you have a question, uh, while we wait for it, we'll, we'll give it five, ten minutes. We'll take some questions and then we'll see how our chicken's done. And I'm going to do some quick saute okay, and some noodles to go with it. And uh, I don't see any questions. Can I substitute ricotta for mozzarella? Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, how am I going to do this? First of all, don't worry. I know exactly what I'm doing. Not only am I a trained chef, but um, I'm afraid to click that little X there because I don't want to take away the whole show going on here. Manage participants. Um, so you can unmute yourself. And Jacqueline, why don't you go ahead and unmute your video and your and yourself until I figure out how to unmute everybody. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's Jacqueline. She had a question. Um, yes, I don't have this fresh mozzarella, but I do have ricotta can i use that instead yeah i don't see why not ricotta's um a little bit uh wetter right uh to start with uh, and i don't think it should be a problem i would put it in if you wanted to mix a little bit of a uh, if you wanted to mix an egg in it you could it would help it to stay you know like like lasagna does um, yeah you could mix a little bit of egg and, and seasoning in it but sure go ahead absolutely All right, anybody, if you're welcome to unmute your lines and uh, un and put your video in place if you want to, if you want us to see you. If not, you don't have to. There we go. Jacqueline, anybody else? Did I answer your question, Jacqueline? Yes, thank you. Okay, anybody else have a question? Uh, let's hear from Lisa. Uh, Lisa, I'm going to unmute you and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, start your video. Um, why don't you give your little spiel, Lisa, that you normally give us in the before we start the event? Well, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to join everyone. Sorry I was a little late. I had put something on Facebook, and um, as a result, I think Diane joined us, Diane Fox. So, hi, Diane. Um, hope everybody's doing okay. And I really like your kitchen, Deb. Thank stuff you. so sorry i am not there to wash your dishes though i that know is isn't that terrible <laughs> of course you're not here to sample the food either i know i know so but it looks delicious and easy to to make so um thank you deb for offering to do this and if any of you i know if a couple of people have actually done this um did you talk about I, yeah, um, I, suggest, I just told them that they can make donations in the, the information in the PDF. In the, that's in exactly the what I was going to say. Um, Deb started a Facebook group with us right here, I think, is what we're doing. No, this and is Facebook. This is I know, Zoom. not now, but you're going to put it on uh, Facebook. Exactly. 
Yeah. Okay. So, and um, if you have a, if you need to look over this thing again to see like what you forgot or missed or whatever. Not that um, we have that much going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So, so anyhow, um, I hope nobody minds me taking pictures because I actually am doing that when you when I see your picture up here I'm taking a little picture of it so. <laughs> okay. and the restrooms right. are down the hallway <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said earlier everybody that a donation to the senior center would be really nice because uh, they're working over there bringing meals to the 50 plus crowd in in uh, York uh, County really hard compared to what they normally do when they're just fluffing off any other time when there's no pandemic. Oh, yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> now, seriously, we are working four times harder than normal and it's just nuts. So right, exactly. We love it. You know, right. like and so they're not getting any of the sponsorship money to plan events either from somebody right. like Spring and Sperry or something like that. Uh, does anybody else have a question before we, uh, before I get the chicken out and put the Parmesan cheese on it and get moving on here? Anybody else? Linda, speak up. No, Linda, speak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think her computer has a camera. Oh, doesn't it? Okay. I don't know. It, there's no, like everybody else has a little thing next to their yeah, thing, and, but hers that. doesn't. And I know Gase doesn't either. But, okay, well, we'll try to have enough time for it. Sometimes the 45 minutes is the, the Zoom meeting uh, plan I have, which is no plan at all called free. And uh, sometimes they cut you off and sometimes they don't. So we'll see if we it do get- It actually said it was gonna extend you. It did say that? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if we get cut off, then just all you have to do is just close out your browser, give me one minute to open up the meeting room again, and we'll come back and finish up. That's all, that's all there is to it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, anybody that has their video turned on, go ahead and um, turn it off. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, hide the screen here. How did I do that? <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Hide non-participants. Okay. Lisa, I don't know how to turn mine off, Deb. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. I got to cook. I got to manage the computer. I got to... <laughs> Many talents you have. <laughs> Lisa and I have been working together for so long that we know each other pretty well. Normally she can anticipate my every need. Uh, and I really enjoy working with her. So let's see what's going on. What do we have to do here yet? I'll get a bottle. Um, let's see what's going on here. I don't know how long it's been in. Long enough to get cooked, is it? Hmm. We're gonna go for it. Let's see, raise it up. Four. Not long enough to get cooked. Uh, what I'm gonna do though is we're just gonna pretend it's cooked, okay? You can see it is starting to get cooked. But what, what we want to do this on now and you see the advantage of having it nice and thick and if you make a whole jar of this and you don't want it nice and thick for the next thing you're making it's really easy just to uh add a little more water like if you're doing something where you want it thinner again so it's okay to add just a little more water later on just put that on there just turn it up to four and we'll put a little bit of this on top, or a lot, right, or a lot. Okay. Maybe I should put it on 500. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, I, I was gonna tell you about my knife, right? I started to, this is a Santuco knife. You see the little divots in it, okay? That's what is indicating Santuco is, even though this was probably made in Germany because it's a good quality forged steel, it's Santuco is the shape and the style with these divots. Those divots are designed so that when you're cutting things, especially things like cheeses or whatever, don't stick. They just kind of, or meat, they just kind of vegetables fall away. And that's what those are designed for. 
and uh, Santuco. See, what you guys don't know, or maybe some of you, especially people that have been coming to these classes for 20 years, uh, I speak Japanese, okay? And uh, when I was in high school, we had a foreign exchange student that lived in our home. She came, was, she was three years older than me. And uh, she came in her first year of college. It was a special school of international living. There's one of it's in Brattleboro, Vermont, and they place family. And they're supposed to stay with you while they're going to college, but she stayed with us for like 15 years. <laughs> so Kiyomi is like my sister. And so as a result of that, I had to speak Japanese. And so I can say two things. I can count to 10. Or I can uh, tell you what time it is. Ask you what to ask you what time it is. I can't tell you what time it is. I can ask you. <laughs> right. But I'm going to just go ahead and, and teach you how to count, okay? Because this is the Santuko knife, which is Japanese. Ichi ni san shi go rok shi chi ha chi ku ju. Okay? That's counting to 10 in Japanese. So this is a Santuko knife. Ichi ni san. What does that mean? Everybody, ichi ni san shi go ro san tuka knife ichi ni san. Three good things: slice, dice, and chop. That's what san tuko means in Japanese. Three good things: slice, dice, and chop. So now you guys can all speak Japanese as well. All you have to do is go ichi ni san shi go ro shi chi ha chi ku. There you have it. All right. Enough of that. We're gonna make a quick batch of pasta, no big deal here, a special. Just gonna heat up our skillet uh, to go with our, our dish. And um, we have some noodles somewhere, don't we, Deb? Where are the noodles? There they are. So you can, as you know, I used the, when I made the dressings, I used queso fresco instead of the um, blue cheese. And so be creative. Uh, Jacqueline asked about ricotta. Uh, you could use pretty much almost any kind of cheese in there if you wanted it. If you uh, want to make this and you don't happen to have mozzarella and Parmesan, well then you, or maybe you just have Parmesan, you could put Parmesan in the center. Or how about cheddar cheese? You can pretty much do it any way you want. And the same with these dressings. We could do the exact same thing here that we already have done. Do I have another jar? I was gonna make another one. Make another one. Make the exact same thing. Everybody loves balsamic vinegar. up to 450 now. Uh, one of the recipes on the Italian uh, Italian dressing recipe, or one of the recipes on the, the sheet is um, the uh, garlic, garlic recipe, and it calls for a roasted garlic. So all you have to do if you want to make a roasted garlic is cut it just below, the serrated knife would be better, like that, just below the top. Then you take a piece of aluminum foil, like this. That there, put a little bit of olive oil on it. Roll it up. oven. You're cooking at 450 degrees. It will probably take 30 minutes at the most, maybe even only 20 minutes. And if you're cooking at, uh, say, 350, 375, um, then it will probably take 45 minutes to an hour. So that's the, for the last one on the list. Somebody has, I mean, somebody has their microphone not muted. Let's see here. Mute all. Not me, I hope. There we go. Did that work? Allow participants to mute themselves. 
There we go. All right. I didn't really plan on roasting that garlic, but if it's in the oven now, no sense in getting it out. I'm going to take a little bit of garlic here. Garlic is really good for you. And a garlic press, you know, a garlic press is something, don't buy the cheapest one. Um, if it, make sure that you keep your screen muted. I mean, uh, stop video. Uh, the only reason I want to do that is because when we record, it's recording the full screen. And if you guys are all visible, then it's record. My, my piece would be really small. Put a little bit of garlic in there. Pepper. I don't know. What do you guys think about having a class on how to make sauerkraut? I got this new thing going on in my life since I have nothing better to do except go outside and play and cook. Uh, every week I make a new kind of sauerkraut. So easy, really, honestly. I made uh, fennel, fennel sauerkraut. Right, that's done. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. And then, if we want to modify this whole recipe to, of all these dressings, and just make a classic um, vinaigrette, like uh, balsamic vinaigrette. Same thing, we can go ahead and use fresh herbs, or you can use dry, let's use dry. What the heck? Got the whole cupboard here, right? Sometimes Lisa has to run out and buy me things, or she calls me every time I'm on the way and says, did you forget anything? I'm like, how would I know if I forgot anything? I didn't start setting up yet, I'm just in my car. Put a little bit of oregano in there, but Lisa has saved the day many times. And sometimes people in the audience save the day. Seems to me one time I said, hey, does anybody have, and then they go right out to their car and get it. Put uh, some garlic in there. You could use fresh garlic, you could use dry garlic. Again, you just use more if you use it fresh than you would if you were using, I want, I want more vinegar. I'm going to follow the same basic format here, the, 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 the mustard, and you know, you could use more if you want the mustardy flavor, but basically I'm using it as emulsifying agent to help it stay suspended. Did I put the garlic in? Did I put pepper in? I don't think I put pepper in. You know, you go to the grocery store and you buy balsamic vinaigrette. I mean, come on. <laughs> why why do you need to buy that? We have it. So we, we in, in 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 our spare time here, so we're approaching the 45 minute mark. Uh, if we get cut off again, just Log out, give me a minute, and we'll open the meeting again. But we're really almost done here. Just going to plate up our food. And realize that you do not have to buy salad dressings. They are so easy. So I'm going to put everybody in the group and uh, give you the opportunity. Everybody can ask questions. You can watch the video again. There's you know, and, and we can talk about what we might want to do for another class. It doesn't have to be sauerkraut. I'm just all into sauerkraut. Let's see here. Give me anything you want. Actually, the, the rest of the classes we were supposed to do in March. Is that when it happened? You know, I haven't been in town since March 14th. Um, the classes that we had in March were had like four or five different chickens. So we could do another chicken. I got all the chicken in the freezer. Okay, here we have 
Mmm, yum, yum. I don't know if they're done with that. I think they are. Sweet pasta, by the way, by the way. All right, you can put it on the plate like this, but I hopefully it's done since I'm going to present it that way. Uh, Looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good here. There you have it. Hopefully it's not, it's gonna stay on the plate. Healthy chicken parm, right? I love cheese, but I love cheese so much. I never put it on a hamburger because I'd rather eat it when you're eating cheese like this. <laughs> or cheese and crackers, you know, make good cheese and eat it when it tastes good, right? No, don't ruin cheese like when on a hamburger. Uh, so there we have our healthy blue cheese. And now as usual at the uh, White Rose classes, we have our photo session. <laughs> so now will be the time to take your pictures with our chicken Parmesan right here. Whoop, there it is. So we're gonna go ahead and take any questions as long as we don't get cut off. And um, so anybody that would like to answer a question is welcome to show their video and, and I'll unmute all the lines. And so you can either ask a question and we'd like to see you. If you'd like, we can talk a little bit about some of the recipes we made. Go ahead. Who's, Lisa, are you still here? Lisa doesn't know how to unmute her lines. If you don't know how to unmute, uh, ask to start video. Um, Okay, I don't see any questions. Anybody else have? There you are, Lisa. I'm here. Okay, would you have anything, Lisa? This was a lot of fun, and it's actually the first Zoom meeting that I've done that actually worked right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but thanks to you, and thanks for all the nice compliments, and you know, good to see everybody. And it looks delicious. Yep. Well, it's just me gets to eat it. <laughs> But it's nice to see everybody. Um, Marilyn, did you, do you have anything you'd like to add? I'll think of it later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice to yeah. see you. Anybody else? I'm Jennifer? gonna make it for dinner tonight. Me? Oh, you're gonna make it. I already made it for dinner. I'm gonna eat <laughs> this one for dinner. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody else? If you guys have some ideas, please like email Deb or myself and we'll try to do something another time too. Yep, and we can talk about it in the Facebook group as well. True. Right. And so you have all the recipes and uh, all the contact information is on there for myself and for Lisa if you want to make a donation to the STARS or the um, Senior Center. And uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, Gay is great. Gay enjoys it. I don't think she has a microphone, but she said great and she enjoyed it. Um, Linda is, is being quiet. Linda, you would like to put something in the chat box? <laughs> nope. Okay, well then I'm gonna Hi. go ahead and stop the recording if nobody has anything, last chance. Hey, I was just gonna say, this is Anita. I was really enjoyable. This is my first Zoom session too. So this was this was really good. We should do more of these. Okay, well Lisa's the organizer. She'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop the recording and everybody can go ahead and log out. Um, and uh, we'll see you again next time. And we'll see you in the Facebook book group. Watch for an invitation for that. Okay? Okay, great. Bye. Thanks, Deb. Yep, Be safe you. and healthy, everybody. Thank you.